Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and on the bench today we have this Zoe ZT701 oscilloscope multimeter that was kindly sent over by Zoe, uh, Zotec Tools, so thank you very much for that and um, yeah, let's see what it's all about um, I don't expect it to be as good as its uh, bigger brother, the 703 but it looks quite feature packed but before we start, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me coffee, have a look at my website and let's get started. So what's in the box? So we have a USB A to C for charging and uh, data. We have the meter leads. We have a um, small instruction manual. And we have this addition, which I presume is a um, something you stick on the back to hold the meter upwards, like a little stand or something, because it doesn't actually have one on the back. And there's, there's the meter itself. So it looks like it's got a nice um, nice big display on it. Power button on the side, couple of buttons on the side there. And one thing I noticed is that it doesn't look like it's got a easy replaceable battery. But we'll have a look at that anyway. So near enough 10,000 counts, true RMS data hold. And we've got DC voltage up to 600 volts, AC volts up to 600 volts, uh, DC and AC millivolts. And we have resistance, we have capacitance, we have frequency measure mode, uh, measurement, diode mode, continuity. And of course we have the oscilloscope section. Now it's only got a 5 megahertz bandwidth on this. And uh, 48 meg samples per second, uh, single channel. But yeah, let's, let's have a look at it, let's see what it can do. So quick look through the instruction book. All seems nicely laid out, as you would expect from a, a Zoe meter. All very nice pictures, all very nice, easy to read. So yeah, that's all good, I quite like that. So let's have a look at the meter leads. Now with this being a budget meter, I don't expect silicon ones but they feel you know silicony plasticky leads they are quite long long enough anyway for connecting to the meter and doing your tests um, it's got some cat ratings on there and you can actually pull them off for a, a bigger probe and the protection for the other end so i presume this stand just sticks on the back somewhere it does it does pull out it's actually stuck mine on yet because I've not found a not found a decent place to put it so let's have a quick look inside so I've took off the four rubber um, rubber bungs which has revealed four self-tapping screws so these aren't captive in any way Let's gently prise the back off and have a look at what's in there. And sure enough, it looks like it's looks like the battery's soldered in. Got some nice little relays there, which you can't hear clicking when you you're doing the auto ranging. But there's our battery. It's not stuck down, but it is soldered in place. So 5.5 watt hour battery. Obviously 3.7 volts, I should think replacements are probably available, you could probably find one that fits, should this battery um, ever fail. So on the bottom there's a slide switch that goes between the USB-C and the negative connection, so I presume it's so you can't connect the USB-C and the negative at the same time. So let's start having a look at its functions. So we'll press and hold the side power button that brings us on to DC or whatever it was left on last. So we've got a nice large screen, nice and colourful, as you would expect from one of these meters. But yeah, not too bad at all. So we can switch through the AC and DC by pressing the menu and we can switch over to the other types of measurement by using left and right. So let's have a quick look at continuity. Yep, not too bad, not too bad at all. So we've got capacitance and 
resistors, millivolt, got voltage AC DC, and the next one the longest diode and continuity. So let's have a look at voltage DC. So I've got my bench power supply on roughly 12 volts. Yep, nice and quick on reading that. And yep, roughly 12 volts. Let's have a look at resistance. So we'll do some in-circuit resistance readings there. And yeah, around about 8K. Yep, that's fine. I think these should be 8.2, but you know, there's a tolerance on them. So yeah, that's fine. Let's do a capacitance check. So we've got a 102 capacitor there. And there it is, one and a half arid. So yes, yeah, breeding quite quickly. Nice and um, nice and snappy, as you would expect. So let's have a look at um, let's have a look at diode. So what we have here is a transistor that we're going to measure. So this should be an MPN. So by using the diode test, we can work out which is collector, base and emitter. Because the base will always read to two of the other legs and the collector will always be the lowest reading. But on this transistor, this transistor has actually got a diode in between the collector and the emitter. Which we can see when we reverse. So yep, yeah, diode check works fine. No problem at all. So let's have a look at some other functions. So pressing the menu button puts the meter to a horizontal view, which is nice. So I suppose you could use that small stand to have it in um, have it in the other orientation, which is nice. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. Quite like that. So we'll press and hold mode. That puts us into the oscilloscope mode. We've got various menu functions. Coupling, trigger levels, auto off, backlight, software version. So what we're going to use here is my function generator. And we've got a, an output. And what we're going to do is we're going to press the auto range on the side. So press auto range and boom, it auto ranges very, very quickly. That's very nice. And it also tells us the frequency of the signal as well. So I can actually adjust the amplitude of my signal on the generator. And we can adjust the offset on the generator, which gives it that clipped view. But that's nothing to do with the scope, but yeah, it's producing a nice, a nice waveform. I don't think you'll be able to use this on anything like um, measuring crystals or anything. But for measuring measuring basic things, yeah, don't see there being a problem with that. You can certainly measure, you can certainly measure audio with it, and you can cert certainly measure load speed um, data buses with it. So I'm just having a play with the auto ranging, and it is. It's nice and quick, I quite like that. So obviously we've got the amplitude and we've got the time base. I've just I have noticed that the time base on this goes a lot quicker than the, the 703. We'll see that in a moment. And there is it reading a audio signal, which is um, being outputted from one of the radios that I've got on test. Just got it connected up to the speaker. So yeah, these re re audio signals, not a problem, but you'd expect that for being, you know, five megahertz. And there's a few of that auto range again, and then we've got data hold, so it stops the, stops it reading and just freezes it. And if we press and hold, it saves the picture to its internal memory, and which you can then retrieve it by using the USB cable.
So yeah, not too bad. So this is where we can move the waveform up and down on the um, on the grid. And the trigger, this is obviously the trigger point. So we've got leading edge and um, obviously falling edge. You can select which trigger you want. Let's get a better view of that. So you see we bring the trigger line down. Yep. Yep, trigger's really nice. Not too bad at all. And you can see at the bottom we've got the frequency. And a couple of other readings, VPP and maximum. So we're just inputting a square wave there. That's fine. The triangle wave. There's obviously a sawtooth wave. Well, that's a reverse sawtooth. Back to sine wave. Let's compare it against the other 703 and um, the auto ranging. It's definitely not as quick on this 703 as it is on the 701. As you can see, the 701 would have done it by now. But there, but you can see on this, on the 703, we can only have 100 microseconds, whereas on the 701, we're already at 50 microseconds. And we can actually go a lot faster than that. So yeah, nice comparison between the two. Obviously, you know, both meters can do different things. If you're doing more complicated stuff, you'll need the 703, but for uh, basic data lines and stuff, the 701 will do just nicely. And um, automotive as well, reading the uh, data buses. Yeah, don't see there being a problem with that. So having a close look at the screen and when we press the shutdown button we get a typo so hopefully Zoe will see this and correct it with a firmware update I did check for a firmware update but there wasn't one available at the time of making the video so there we have it the Zoe ZT701 oscilloscope multimeter kindly sent over by Zotec Tools Zoe thank you very much there will be a link in the description below to the official AliExpress seller. Hope you enjoyed this quick review and tear down and quick play with it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look at my website. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.